whatever they want with that check. They can go on vacation. They don't have to do any repairs. They're owed that money because they insured that property. The worst advice you can get. All of a sudden, insurance adjusters have to pay for entire wall. Boom, extra $4,000 on the claim. So it's going to be a win-win for that homeowner. Lose, lose for the homeowner. But if we started the Insurance companies are not paying enough. And this guy keeps saying that they pay too much. Never happens. They are predators. They're targeting low income homeowners who are desperate for this offer. So he does need, in a sense, contractors help to identify real scope of work. In this video, we will go over insurance claim explained by public adjuster. We're going to review his YouTube video. I'm going to react to it with you. He's given us two options. Option, what you get as a homeowner from contractor working with a contractor and what you get working with him. We're going to go head to head, compare his numbers, and I'm going to explain to you why his option is a daylight robbery. For the record, I want to start the video with we endorse public adjusters. There is a lot of good public adjusters and public hiring public adjuster is a good option for the homeowner, but you have to find the good one and not every claim need public adjuster. If you're the homeowner and you have insurance paperwork on your hands and you don't know what to do, I have been contractor for seven years and I've helped people with the thousands of insurance claims. We've done a lot of work over the years. We have never have problems with those claims. We've never been sued. We never have major disputes, nothing. And I will show you my business model and I will explain to you public adjuster model and how crooked some of these public adjusters are. I'm gonna call them out because numbers don't lie. So I actually printed um, example that Anthony is bringing here. So two claims, two different numbers. I'm not making this up. It's his example that he's teaching you. I'm just a contractor who's gonna explain what really going on behind the scenes and stuff he's not telling you. It's his YouTube channel, Roofer Settlement versus Public Adjuster Settlement is the title of this video. Hey everybody, Anthony Shire, Public Insurance Adjuster and all these contractors are on me. Show your, show your work, show your estimate compared to a contractor's estimate on the same job. Well, here it is. On the left-hand side is the insurance company settlement. They used the contractor. They said, we'll help with the insurance claim. We'll do it for whatever the insurance company pays. So it was 30 squares of shingle on the left-hand side, 30 squares of shingles, and they got $16,000, about $500 a square. Now, we got called in because they wanted to settlement double-check. The insurance company didn't, didn't pay for the siding. So we got in and we evaluated the same roof. We believe they're owed about $23,000 for that same damage, not, not 16. So that's about, what, a 30% increase. Almost. So first thing first, he claims that he increased the claim by 30% on the roof. Very common practice. You don't need public adjuster to do that. Any roofing contractor who knows how insurance companies uh, operate can get extra 30%. This is not nothing to do with the policy. This is nothing to do with, you know, acting as a public adjuster. It's simply asking insurance adjuster for certain items. Insurance adjusters, when they come out, they often miss items. They have insurance company best interest. So by default, they usually shorten those estimates by 30, 40% on average. A lot of those arguments, nothing to do with the policy, can be simply uh, added to the claim by asking insurance adjuster to add scope of work. So it's not being done by reviewing the policy per se. It's being done by knowing exactimate and insurance process and being reasonable with insurance company. It's $24,000. Not too bad, but let's go on through the rest of the claim because you know there's more to it than just the roof. In this case, there's some interior damage. On the left, the insurance company paid four line items. On the right are the line items that uh, they're really owed for, for that damage. Now, I know the contractors are going to look at this and say, try to, oh, this is what I should put in my in my estimate. But if you're putting things in just to make that settlement higher, one suspect line item makes the whole entire estimate suspect, and the insurance company is not going to be happy with that, right? So, so he keeps throwing contractors under the bus. He keeps saying that it's the contractors who commit fraud, it's the contractors who how he just explained it, like uh, adding suspicious uh, line items to add to the claim, to inflate the claim. We don't do that. 
legally we're gonna go to jail but I'll show you in a second what he does and why he inflates uh, the claim and how he gets away with it he lies to insurance company he lies to the homeowner he deceives those two parties to rob you out of your settlement money let me explain how so you want to use a public insurance adjuster who can show and explain why they owe these things somebody you can use a contractor to show why the scope of work needs to be increased. It's nothing to do with the policy. Here's how it works. I'm a contractor, you're the homeowner. You call us and telling us that you have insurance claim. As a contractor, we're contracting to do a certain scope of work. You call us, that means I need a deck, I need a roofing, I need a siding job, I need the gutters, and I'll tell you what I can and what I cannot do. Insurance companies are not paying enough, and this guy keeps saying that they pay too much, never happens. So when the insurance company pays you $500 to scrape the ceiling and paint it, good luck finding drywall guy or someone willing to do that. We're gonna discuss scope of work, they're gonna pay for it, and me and you will decide who's gonna do the work. It could be me, it could be you, it could be third party, another contractor, but we will figure it out was licensed to negotiate with that insurance company adjuster so interior the insurance company paid a thousand dollars for the interior damage i don't even have an amount yet there's so many line items uh let's go down here it was twelve thousand dollars they're owed for the interior so check this out this is where it gets really dirty really fast what he just said he's getting insurance company to pay twelve thousand dollars for interior damage i'm gonna give you a little spoiler you are not getting it that's the amount that you've been robbed as a homeowner uh you can actually see the estimate extra large room contents move out and reset we're removing cabinets we clean the walls and ceiling uh with scraping ceiling so he literally goes to insurance company and saying all right we have this amount of work here we have to scrape the ceiling we have to paint this walls we have to clean the floors you know, a pretty big job. We have a uh, dumpster low, 12 yards for debris. So he's getting us something for the vinyl, 550. So five squares of siding needs to be done. You know, he's getting overhead and profit for that, for the siding guy. Because, you know, if you look at this, 500 square feet of siding, the job is there for $2,500. Do you think it's enough money for the contractor with the overhead and profit? Insurance company is paying $2478 for five squares for 5,500 square feet of vinyl siding. Couple thousand dollars. You, you're talking about couple workers going to the store, buying materials, dealing the job. It's, it's probably take them two days. Two days, two guys, materials, labor, with overhead and profit, but you're not gonna get it done because you hire a public adjuster and he's gonna rob you off like crazy. Let me show you how. The, so there was, there was siding, right? Four grand for the siding. Our settlement, $40,000. The insurance company settlement for that same claim, $17,000. That is a huge, huge difference, right? It's not a huge difference. It's very, very common. Here's what happens. Here's why claims like this happen all the time. After the hurricane, after the hail, insurance companies will deploy their adjusters. And those adjusters, super busy. They run 8, 10, 15 appointments a day. So what does the adjuster do? He comes out, spend one hour, write very generic, basic scope of work. He's gonna miss a lot of items. He's, he might miss the ceilings, you know, stuff like this. He might miss siding wall. He might not see everything. He, it might be too late in the day. That's why reinspections are very common. The good thing here that insurance company came and opened the claim, right? So they opened the claim, they offer $17,000. That initial estimate is initial offer. Insurance adjuster is not a contractor. He does not know what it takes to repair a siding. So he does need, in a sense, contractor's help to identify real scope of work. He might see one damage on one piece of siding and he might think that it's replaceable. But contractor comes in and say, hey, this is discontinued siding, we can't even get it here. So in that case, but just by contractor providing evidence that he cannot find the siding, all of a sudden, insurance adjuster have to pay for entire wall. Boom, extra $4,000 on the claim. Didn't need public adjuster, nothing illegal. This is how $17,000 claim often doubled because we're adding more trades. We're agreeing for more work. In this case, normally we would take 35% on any additional we got. So and this is the problem. Out of that claim, 
in insurance proceeds, an in insurance estimate, you don't have line item for public adjuster. You don't have 35% to pay public adjusters. So money have to come from somewhere. Ask yourself this question, where the money is coming from? How, how this guy is getting paid 35%? So $40,000 seems pretty good, but 35%, what is it, like $9,000? How he's getting paid, this is getting spicy. It's gonna be a win-win for that homeowner. Lose-lose for the homeowner. But if we started the claim from the beginning, let me show you how, how much better it would work out. Now, so this is the best case scenario. Their fee is actually 25% if, if you start from the beginning. And this is where it gets very tricky. $40,000 settlement minus depreciation. Depreciation is negotiable, and that's what's great about public adjuster. A lot of times we negotiate the depreciation. So back here, the insurance company um, put about four grand of depreciation. So I'm going to assume eight grand because I don't want to be accused of cooking the books, right? Minus the homeowner's deductible is a $31,000 actual cash value check they're owed they can do whatever they want with that check they can go on vacation they don't have to do any repairs they're owed that money because they insured that property the worst advice you can get listen if you're the homeowner watching this video please from the bottom of my heart i want to give you good advice here's what's happening here you have a hail damage storm damage whatever damage you have insurance company is paying you forty thousand dollars for the reason this is not your lottery ticket. This is not money to spend on vacation. This is not advice you want to hear. You probably want to hear sounds too good to be true or oh, I can really keep the money. Yes, but I'll show you at what cost. Everything is appreciates. We have inflations. If you have $40,000 to fix your property, paint those walls, fix those cabinets, fix that siding, replace that roof, do it today because two, three years from now, it will get way worse and way more money will need it to be repaired. So not to mention that if you don't replace the roof or siding, you might get interior damage. You actually can have way more damage. So take this opportunity as your chance to improve your property value. The biggest problem here, by not fixing it and cashing that money, you're losing $8,000 depreciation. That's what he just said. You get him $40,000, the insurance company is giving you $40,000. It's actual cash value less depreciation. Actual cash value is $31,000 minus depreciation, $8,000 minus $1,000 deductible. Sounds good, I'm, I'm saving $1,000 deductible, but you're saving insurance company eight grand. Instead of putting $8,000 in your house, you saving insurance company and they put it in their mutual funds. And you totaled it, the insurance company would give you a check, you don't have to buy a new car. Now yeah, you don't have to buy a new car, but the, how stupid it is not to buy a car. If you have 2019 Ford, buy 2019 Ford. With this guy, you will be driving 2011 Ford because you're gonna go on vacation and you're gonna downgrade your lifestyle. You kind of have to do what insurance company is paying for. Otherwise, you're robbing yourself. You're saving insurance company money and you're giving this crook money. And he is crook and I'll show you how. Now, of course, you're gonna fix your roof. You're gonna do that because you won't be insurable if you don't do it and you can never claim it again if you don't do it, right? So let's assume our fee is 25%. Not assume, this is your fee, 25% of that actual cash value settlement. That's $23,000 that homeowner has to go towards repairs. So the roofer can still do the roof for 17 grand, but the homeowner now has 6,000 more dollars than they would have had if I wasn't involved at all to go towards the other repairs. Do you remember how much interior damage was? It was $12,000. So now you only have $6,000 left. So you, now you don't have money to pay for siding. You don't have money for interior repair. You're gonna be living in a third world neighborhood if all your neighbors do this scenario. Let's say we have 100 houses, we have 100 adjusters came in initially and wrote estimates just for roofs or you know half of the scope of work. And then homeowners hire this public adjuster. So he's getting $7,700 for his work, but money is not coming from on top of the estimate on top of the claim money is actually coming from the work so now instead of paying your contractor twenty three thousand dollars you want to pocket what he's offering you like hey here's six thousand dollars you can do anything you want 
and at what cost anything you want because you're not going to do deciding i want to get into his head for a second when he earlier went to insurance company and if you look at his estimate he literally a pitch insurance company scope of work hey my homeowner needs this this and this they need to scrape ceilings they need to paint walls they need to do siding you owe them this money now when insurance company is paying it he's deceiving insurance company in that sense because he knows he's not going to recommend those repairs because he knows he's not going to give you money to do those repairs you don't have money to do the scope of work he is proposing to insurance company he comes to you and he deceives you and he's robbing you out of value of your house he said well Insurance company not going to pay you depreciation because the only way you can get depreciation $8,000 is by hiring contractor and actually doing the work. My fee is 25% because you didn't have it before. Pay me $7,700. So you spend the money on your next vacation, you know, according to this guy, you know, take this money, do whatever. You don't have to do those repairs. Company, insurance company owes you this money. And I did get it from them for the repairs, but you don't have to do the repairs. So he's telling you what you wants to hear. If you read reviews on Metro Public Adjuster Group, one of the words that I've seen few times, it's predatory. They are predators. They're targeting low income homeowners who are desperate for this offer. Hey, I'm gonna get a couple more thousand dollars. How are they getting it? by? reducing the claim so you got forty thousand dollars and you're only getting one roof out of it seventeen thousand dollars that's it that's the value added to your house and your house is going to be in way worse condition than before another thing what you do is your house receives seventeen thousand dollars worth of work is forty thousand dollar claim your insurance company willing to pay forty thousand dollars but you forgive them so you're giving away eight thousand dollars for insurance company to keep you're giving away another seventy seven hundred dollars for public adjuster for a couple calls that he made and you don't have money for siding all interior work your public adjuster told your insurance company you're owed for this is your option number one I have an amount yet there's so many line items uh let's go down so if it was a paid off car and you totaled it the insurance company would give you a chill if you don't do it and you can never claim it again if you don't do it right so let's assume our fee is 25 percent of that actual cash value settlement that's twenty three thousand dollars that homeowner has to go towards repairs so the roofer can still do the roof for 17 grand but the homeowner now has six thousand more dollars than they would have had if I wasn't involved at all to go towards the other repairs. The side that's not true. You could get it easily. And by the way, $70,000 for a roofer, that's just for basic line items. What he is doing is he's claiming overhead and profit. Insurance companies paying line items for dumpsters, for removal, for install. The same goes with the medical insurance. They pay basic labor. They pay, uh, they pay basic materials and on top of that, they add overhead and profit. Because if you're a good contractor, insurance company will recognize it. They will work with you to improve the scope of work and that's what's gonna happen. Siding in the interior. But without me involved, there was very little money, if any, for any of that. And you did not get any of that at the end either. He got paid way more than he offers you and he robbed you. And this is why you want to use a public insurance adjuster. Let us get a settlement for that homeowner. And if the money that they have left over is enough to do the work they want done. It's not let's enough. Let's say the homeowner wants to do the roof, 17 grand. And then the insurance company gave a grand for the interior damage. All right, to do a grand's worth of interior. And it's not $5,000 more to do what? Oh, the, the siding was $4,700. So now, now what? It's all done. And the homeowner didn't have to pay out the deductible because it's already accounted for in in the actual cash value settlement came out of that check and certainly the the roofer does not get to charge you forty thousand dollars because i negotiated a forty thousand dollar settlement that you were owed according to the policy that you bought all right here's way better option for you we don't need you anthony i'm sorry we do need good public adjusters and i'll tell you where to find them in a second but here's the best option here's the best thing you can do as a homeowner this is working with a contractor option 
Insurance company is offering you $40,000 claim. You do pay $1,000 deductible. If you try to pocket that money, it's illegal in Minnesota, it's illegal in Texas, it's illegal in a lot of states. There is a reason for it. That's your part of the agreement. You sign that paperwork, pay the deductible. You're getting $40,000 worth of work for the price of $1,000. You have $31,000 ACV check, actual cash value. To get the remaining $8,000, you have to do the work. You don't have to do the work with me as a contractor. If I don't do painting or if I don't do drywall, we will ask insurance companies to pay for it and we will recommend you someone who does it. You don't get to keep the money and you pay for your deductible, but your house received $39,000 worth of work and your house is back to normal. And that's the most important thing. That's how contractors work with the homeowners. Everything this guy said in this video, 99% of contractors who understand insurance process can help you with that without you losing 35% of that claim. Let's finish the video. If you want a settlement double check, there'll be a link in the description. If you had an insurance claim up to a year old that you feel was wrongfully denied or underpaid, they said it wasn't more than your deductible, we check it for free. If you're not owed any more money, there's no fee for what we do. And we only take a fee. Oh, there is a lot of fee. You pay a no lot. Additional, but I highly recommend you let us help a claim from the beginning. So he, he keeps claiming that his fee comes in additional, but on additional work, he's literally robbing contractors and homeowners. So he's robbing you out of your settlement money. That, that money, that fee, that increase, it doesn't belong to him. He does not get paid on siding items or overhead and profit for roofing job on the interior damage. So he's literally, he does increase the dollar amount but he's telling you not to do the work because you don't have money to do the work because he has to collect his fees on his increased structure. Those are your two options. There are a lot of good public adjusters. This is not one of them. And this is why we had to make this video. If you are looking for good public adjuster or good contractor, check out directory.com. I have built that platform for the last two years and I'm constantly looking for trustworthy players in the marketplace. Here's a few requirements that we have in directory. Number one, you have to have at least 20 reviews online. Number two, you have to maintain 4.5 stars of reputation. So if your homeowners are having problem with your services, whether you're a contractor or public adjuster, we're not gonna recommend you. We cannot recommend guys like this, like him, because his company, if you read their reviews, it's 50-50 chance that you're gonna be happy. 50-50 chance, less than three stars. If a contractor took insurance money and he did not do the work and he cashed the check and he ran away and you cannot reach him, if you found him in directory.com, I will personally come to you or mail you a check for that amount. This is my biggest business. This is what I do every single day. If you're the homeowner and you need help with your claim, send us a paperwork. Send us three bits that you received from your contractors and we will tell you who is the best fit in our opinion. We will give you advice. We are concierge in home improvement services. It's hard to find a contractor. It's hard to settle insurance claim and do all the scope of work when you have five trades. It's hard to find people who you can trust because people like this guy, they go on the internet and give you good advice and they're so confident in their message but follow the money, numbers don't lie. People do. Thank you guys for your attention. Comment below what you think about this video and this topic. If you're the contractor, I wanna hear from you. If you're a good public adjuster, reach out to us, check out directory. We wanna promote you, we wanna endorse you. We desperately need good public adjusters. By the way, this guy promised to sue me. He said that they are gonna sue me on Libel and Slender, I think he's the one slandering his name. Anthony, Metro Public Adjustment, I can't wait for the paperwork from the court. I would love to see you in court, so bring it. Can't wait. See you guys.